Welcome back to another episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming. I'm your host, Gaming J, and we continue to build towards Halloween with yet another spooky spook extravaganza experience. You can't have spooky without the spook extravaganza. Um, today we're playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night, I believe. Uh, yes, there it is. Symphony of the Night. This is supposed to be a good Castlevania, actually. Um, I mean, many Castlevanias are good Castlevanias, but what I mean is, like, in my mind, I think the classic NES Castlevanias are kind of, like, my favorite. Even though I didn't really play them, it's like, I just remember them from the NES era, and I did play Castlevania 1, I think, for the channel, and I had a lot of fun with it. I liked it. And I've played some of the other Castlevanias, more modern ones, and they're good, too. They're, they're fine. Um... But I think that classic NES one, I remember so much as a kid, even though I never owned it, uh, that I really, really liked it. But this one is supposed to be like quite good as well, so I I'm curious to, tr to check it out. Um, I think a lot of people consider this one of the best Castlevanias, if not really high up there in the franchise. And so, you know, even, you know, whatever, even if I think the original Castlevania is better after trying this one here today, I definitely almost already agree this game should be in the thousand one games you just play before you die book. Um, it's kind of interesting. It's like, you know, there's some games that we play on this channel. Um, oh, hold on. I need a name. How about I'll be the classic Jayeth. That's the name I tend to use when we go uh, medieval fantasy. Jayeth the Wise. Um, Jayeth the Talker, actually, is probably the better one. Journey back to 1792. All right, we're going back in time for some old school vampire action. Um, anyway, yeah, so I think it's actually kind of interesting. I was like, there's some games we play and I'm like, I don't I haven't really heard of this one or maybe I have kind of heard of heard of it, but I'm like, I don't really know what it entails. And I'm like, we'll see. We'll see. And we try it. And for the most part, it's usually like, yeah, this is a pretty good game. Although we have our fair share of like, why is this in the book? Or like, this is okay for like a specific niche audience, but is this like the thousand and one list? Is it is it worthy of the thousand and one list? Um, but I think for something like Castlevania Symphony of the Night, it has enough of a legacy around it that uh, that I'm almost willing to say right now, like, yeah, I, sure, belongs to the thousand and one list. So there's my critique how about that's my pre my pre teak and then after the game i'll give you my post teak and then both will merge into the critique itself the master critique like a i don't know what are those robots that all go together that fit together you know the robots hold on the science fiction robots oh man my god gundams no they're not gundams they're one's like a tiger and one's n not gobots the F, oh my god. Okay, my brain, I think I'm not getting enough sleep because the last few days I haven't been able to think of words. I've been struggling to find the right words to explain what I mean. What the hell is the name? I want to say like Godar, Gunzar. What the hell? The name of all the robots that go together. You're probably screaming it at the stream. The scream. The scream. The screen. Let me know in the comments down below. What the hell is the name of that robot? It's like five robots and they all fit together. And it's Japanese, but we all know it in North America, too. Um, God damn, it's going to drive me crazy. Anyway, whatever. Um, oh, hello, vampire. Hi, monster. You don't belong in this world. We got some voice acting. It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. I was called here by humans who wish to pay me tribute. Tribute? You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. <laughs> what? <laughs> are as empty as your soul. Got some deep religious commentary going on here, guys. You. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But that and a pair of testicles. Um. All right, we're fighting Dracula already. Usually they save this for the end of the game, but uh, I don't mind. I like how we're we're subverting the expectations here. 
What are the buttons? Oh, there we go. Okay, that did a thing. Barely hit him. I think he's gonna kill me, actually. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, you can jump those. You kinda wanna, like, hit him once or twice. Have you guys seen what we do in the shadows? It's the Taiko Atiti and, uh... Flight of the Concords guy, Jermaine Clement. It's their movie, it's about, uh... Like, vampires who live in modern times. It's sort of like a mockumentary. It's actually hilarious. It's, it's got Rise Darby. He Right now, he's in, um... What's the HBO one with uh, Blackbeard? Um, oh my god, he turned into a giant monster. Uh, uh, our flag means death. Uh, that's another... Also, Taika Waititi's also in that. It's pretty funny. Uh, I'm gonna straight up gonna die here. Am I, what, am I supposed to beat him? Princess Zelda has come to save me. Oh, she's bringing me back with the power of monsters. Yes. I wonder what happened if I uh, failed this or beat this fight honestly. Like she would, there would be no need for her to show up. He's just giving up now. He's like, I'm not even gonna attack you, bro. Like, they could put a little fight in him. But I guess they didn't want to. Eat that, Dracula! Interview with the Vampire, that's another... That's another good, uh... Good vampire movie. Brad Pitt, Tom Cruise. Classic vampire movie. It was Richter Belmont, the legendary vampire hunter, who succeeded in finally ending the menace of Count Dracula, Lord of the Vampires, who had been brought back from the grave by the Dark Priest Shaft. Ever. One night, four years later, under the glare of full moon, Richter mysteriously vanished. With no idea where to begin to search, Maria Renard set out to look for him. It was there that fate intervened. Castlevania, the dark castle of Dracula, which is rumored to appear once every century, suddenly materialized out from the mist as if to show her the way. Me, oh my god, keeps going. Meanwhile, powerful forces were struggling for the soul of a man named Alucard. That's Dracula backwards, obviously. The very same Alucard who had teamed up with Trevor Belmar to battle the immortal father, Count Vlad Tepes Dracula. Alucard... Okay, hold on. Robots that fit together. Giant Japan. I gotta search this. It's driving me crazy. Um, what the hell are the name of those giant... It's like a Zord. Is it Gundam? Mecha? Getting all sorts of search results that don't really fit. I'm looking this up on my phone right now. I think I missed some story, but... Um, okay, I have a re the picture here. Guardian. It says Gundam. That can't be correct. Ah. What? Oh, here's a cool cutscene. The parallax effects are really cool, actually. See, I like sprite-based games like this that are on more advanced platforms that can use more advanced techniques but still are sprite-based. That's pretty cool. Voltron! That is the name. Oh my god, it was driving me nuts. Voltron. All right, we're Alucard. I can I can die happy now. Oh, all right. Well, I, I thought that was going to be a harder fight, but that guy just went down like a pile of bones. Um... Well, like, that was easy, too. I kind of miss the whip, honestly. The sword, I feel like, is kind of... I mean, it seems to be quite powerful, but it also feels a little pathetic. Oh, that window just closed. Die. Yeah, these are some sweet pixel art graphics. I mean, obviously, they're mixing in a bit of polygonal stuff, but... I like that they didn't just needlessly make this 3D. Like, they were like, you know what? 
Yeah, it's on the PS1. Yeah, we could go polygonal, but sometimes a good sprite is all you need. Alright, so this is clearly one of those where the F do you go kind of games. Because already there have been like multiple paths and I have no idea if this is the correct one. Um, I feel like, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of these, uh... Everyone loves Metroidvania, that's what people call it these days. Um, oh look, we're fighting death himself. What is your business here? I've come to put an end to this. Still befriending mortals. I'll not ask you to return to our side, but I demand you cease your attack. I will not. You shall regret those words. We will meet again. Oh, what the heck? <clears throat> he stole my stuff. Thief! Oh, now I can only punch. I lost all my cool abilities. I seem to recall that that was the way things were gonna go. Um... Yeah, at least the cutscenes are relatively brief. Um... But anyway, I lost my train of thought of, of what I was saying before. I literally don't remember what I was talking about. Um... Damn, now I, I kind of want to rewind the video myself and like see what I, I actually said. Uh, what was I talking about? Shit. And my brain just isn't in it today. I, I really think I need more sleep. I think that's where we are with things. Ow. Oh, we got a short sword. Oh, do I have to equip this stuff? Equip. Empty hand, empty hand, short sword. No. Okay, go back. Oh, there we go. We actually have a weapon. All right. Word. Oh, yeah, Metroidvania. I feel like a lot of people love Metroidvania-style games. And even back in the day for the very first Metroid on NES, I did play it and... <laughs> excuse me. I tried to get Cube of Zoe. Um, I tried to get, uh, you know, as far as I could in the game. And I did sort of like the exploration and stuff of it. But at the same time, I wasn't a huge fan of it. Um, I didn't own Mega Man growing up, but when I later played Mega Man at friends' houses, I felt like I liked Mega Man a lot more, where, like, it had some of the freedom and stuff of Metroid, but it's like, it also had, like, a main screen where you just selected levels, and then, like, you went to a boss, and it was, it was, Mega Man's not, like, a linear, linear game, but it's more linear than, than this. And it's funny, because, like, in true open-world exploration games, I do kind of like them. Like, I, I do like games that give you the freedom to go places, but I guess I just find in, like, a 2D platformer, it's too hard to, like, keep track of, like, where you've been and stuff, and, like, I don't know, I just don't quite like it, honestly. Um, okay, now what is this? Oh, I found, a uh, Hide Cures. There you go. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. With these exploratory type games, I'd almost rather they not even be exploratory or just be top down. You know, like Legend of Zelda, I kind of never minded that that one was exploratory in nature because it was like easier to track where you were in an overworld. I don't know. So yeah, I don't know, Metroidvania, what do you guys think of the, of the, the sort of genre? Um, maybe you're like me, maybe you're not like me. Who knows? But anyway, I am me. Nice to meet you. Um, so far, though, one thing I am liking about this game is we have not encountered a, uh, like, dead end. That, I mean, that, that's the one reason I don't like these Metroid-style games, is you encounter dead ends so frequently. Then you have to remember, like, where you were and what item, you know, you couldn't jump high enough or you couldn't get past the fireballs. You kind of have to remember what you need. Then you have to go explore another random dimension to find out where, you, you know, something you haven't seen before. So this the dead ends and the backtracking that gets tedious. But so far in this game, we have not had to do either of those things, so I'm a fan. I'm in favor. Oh, Jesus. Oh my god. Where's my health, by the way? Oh god. I just seem to be taking hits like crazy. I think I'm close to death. Oh! Oh, oh 
Oh, he turned into a pile of blood and then evaporated. That's how you die, vampire style. Game over. Let us go out this evening for pleasure. The night is still young. While well, you look at bones and a cross. Of course, but of, but of course. Um, wait, what? Oh my god. Uh, we're, we're back in the old age of gaming before they had autosave. It's so funny to enter, like, like back in the day, games did not have checkpoints and autosaves and stuff. Nowadays, you just take it for granted, but no, you gotta manually save this crap. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it, I, I'm acting as a warning for anyone, any, any adventurous modern gamer who would like to go back and enjoy the fruits of the past, remember, you gotta save manually. These old games, they don't do checkpoints, man. man. Which is very tiresome, frankly. It'd be nice if they did a checkpoint once in a while. We gotta sit through this cutscene again? Are you serious? I oh, know, we can skip that. Okay. Well, we'll play a little bit longer, but uh, I wasn't planning on devoting a ton of time to this one here today. I mean, it's it's Castlevania, as you saw. It's Metroidvania-ish. We're not going to get too far on this bad boy here. But I guess let's try and kill Dracula again. See, like, Simon Belmont here, whoever this guy is, he's got, like, a big long whip and stuff. I actually wish I could play as this character as opposed to Alucard. It's like they went, went to all this work to, like, animate his whip and do this stuff, and, like, he's only ever going to show up once. There must be a point in the game where you can switch to him. Humans who wish to pay me tribute. Tribute? You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Perhaps the same could be said of all religions. Your words are as empty as your soul. Mankind ill needs a savior such as you. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. I like that line. It's deep. You little miserable pile of secrets. So I think you have to fail this fight. Kind of feels like one that you're not supposed to win. But they kind of make you go through it anyway. He is also like Pathetically easy, as far as bad guys go. Oh. Okay, you know what? It's time, man. Look, at, look how buff my arms are. Huzzah! He's the power of Christ. The power of Christ compels you. Oh, how did I do that? Oh, there we go. That's what you want to do. Oh yeah, eat it. I just figured out how to actually do a move, Dracula. Now what? Ooh. Yeah, I am taking quite a bit of damage though. Oh, we turned him into dog form. There is no Dana, only Zool. Oh no, wait, he's not a dog. He's yeah, he killed me. Save me, Zelda! It's like Altered Beast. She gave me, like, the cheetah, the eagle, the snake, and the wombat. Going down, Dracula. Oh, look at this. Ah, sweet. I like how he falls into a Polaroid picture. And then it burns up. They were just showing off there. They're like, look at what we can do on the PS1, man. Look at all these awesome digital effects. Oh my god, am, am I serious? Do I have to sit through this again? This means every time you start a new game, you gotta read all this stuff. Why did they name the priest Shaft? That's such a weird name. That's gotta be like a bad Japanese translation. 
Like, it totally makes sense in Japan. Like, oh, like the ancient and terrifying name of Shaft. And in North America, it's like it has a different connotation. It reminds me of, like, Shaft, you know, like that, like, 1970s uh, black hero guy. Oh, God, okay. We get it. Dracula, Alucard. Spooky stuff, guys. Spooky stuff. Alucard, in order to purge the world of his own cursed bloodline, has submerged his vampiric... has sub had submerged his vampiric powers and entered into what was supposed to be an eternal slumber. Now he is awake and aware of the evil once again at work in his homeland. The time has come once again for the forces of good and evil to engage in their ancient battle. Dracula's castle beckons you, and no man... And no man can say who shall emerge victorious. Maybe no man can, but a vampire can't. No, wait, no man. No man can. So no vampire can't. I I don't, I don't know how to fix that sentence. <clears throat> I was trying to imply that if a man can't do it, then maybe you need a vampire because he's not he's not a man, is he? Okay, back into the game, please. I would like to kill some things. It's kind of a shame I feel like we've been playing this for like 20 minutes now, and as I say, I'm probably gonna wrap up shortly. <clears throat> but it's like we're mostly kind of stuck in like the opening, you know, like we're not getting super far. I mean, I guess this is the kind of game that is deep enough that if we really, uh, wanted to stick with it and stuff, we'd be playing it for a long time. You know, like, if we wanted to make real progress, we'd have to make, like, a two-hour video and stuff, and... Not that I haven't made two-hour videos, and I won't ever again, but, uh... You know, it just depends how much time I set aside for sitting down to make any particular video. Um... So, anyway. Today, it's just a fun little... I don't know, Halloween tree. We got zombies, we got wolves, we got vampires, we got mansions. What more do you people want? Maybe the true monster of Halloween is you people all along with your unceasing demands on me. Get out of here, bats. I wonder if anyone out there who's watching this is going <clears throat> as Dracula for Halloween. Not that... I think if you look at my audience, it's mostly people 30 plus... Well, there's some 20-year-olds and some people who are younger, but just the majority is sort of, I think, 30-plus. So I guess I should preface all this by saying, I know you guys don't actually go for Halloween. Nobody's trick-or-treating, I imagine. I mean, wh what is the oldest recorded trick-or-treater in history? It's got, you gotta tap out by the time you're like 12 or 13. Maybe 15 or 16 if it's like, you know, really, you're really pushing it. But, like, nobody in, like, their late 20s, early 30s is going trick-or-treating. I will not. I, I really do wonder what's the oldest trick-or-treater ever. But anyway, uh, we're getting super sidetracked. Um, hypotheticals aside, I know that most of you guys who are dressing up for Halloween, maybe you're going to, like, an office party, or, like, you're having some friends over, or whatever. Uh, but is anybody going as Dracula? And if you're not going as Dracula, what the hell are you going as? I don't think I'm dressing up as anything for Halloween. Um, because I am not going to an office party or anything like that. But... If I was, like, let's say, okay, if I had to dress up this Halloween, what would I do? I mean, I don't have a costume purchase, so I would have to prepare one with things I have on hand. I'm trying to think, like, what do I, do I have enough anything to make a thing? One year, uh, a f friend invited me to a Halloween party, and I didn't really have time to do anything. And I had like an old clown makeup set in my uh, in my bathroom. So what I did is I um, took the purple and the blue, and I sort of put it around one of my eyes, like I had a black eye. And I took some of the red and made it look like my nose had been bleeding, but it dried. And I put a few other bruises on myself, and then I wore like a button-up shirt, and I went as Edward Norton from Fight Club. Um, that was actually kind of a fun costume. It really did just look like I got the 
the crap beaten out of me. It looked like I tried to go as like a businessman. I just got beat up. And actually at the, the Halloween party, friends were like, man, what are you? And I was like, I'm Edward Norton from Fight Club. And they're like, you look like a businessman who had his kidneys stolen. <laughs> So I was simultaneously Edward Norton from Fight Club and a businessman who got beaten up in the parking lot and had his kidney stolen. It's it's a nice interchangeable costume. Um, yeah, that's that's all I got really. I'm trying to think of like what else could you do like on on very short notice or with limited supplies. Oh jeez, you need you need at least a little bit of makeup. I. I, I think, other than that, you're just talking about, like, totally, purely, you know, dress. Like, not, not a dress, but, like, the dress that you're wearing. Again, not a dress, but the clothes, I guess I could say. Um, and I don't know if I have anything purely in clothes. I, I would have to go as, like, a guy in his pajamas. Like, that would have to be the extent of the creativity if, I, if I'm just doing this on the fly. <clears throat> okay, I think we died around here. There is no save option. There probably was like a little save zone or something and I walked past it. But we'll see. Just gonna try and like, not die stupidly. As obvious as that sounds. Ow. Oh jeez. My plan to not die stupidly is starting off rough, rough. Oh, we have nine hit points left. Look at this beautiful Adonis of a statue. It never, Alucard could never. Not, a, not on, not with his spare time. You need a workout re regime like a god. We get cut like that. Should we go further up? No, we'll go over this way. Ooh, what is this? Hey, I found a D20. Anyone want to play some D and D? happening oh there's a coffin in there oh we just saved our game all right awesome where'd the d20 go all right now we go up i guess higher and higher i do like the platforming it's pretty solid it is i think platforming is one of those weird things in games it just is always fun that and shooting stuff and jumping on the heads of things. Whoa, what, 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 what's happening? What are these guys? Oh my god, they're playing rock music at me. Do you guys hear that, like, heavy metal rock guitar? Oh, I can't hit this thing. This thing is actually creepy. It's like a bird-headed freakazoid. Oh, what's happening? Oh, I fell for it. That was the most telegraphed attack ever, and I fell for it. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't bother to actually load your game. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that. I don't care about the game over the death, but like if I have a save game, like pop me back to it, bro. Make me go and or if the title screen loaded quickly. You know, like I don't need it. I don't need the whole like production every time where it like fades the screen out and then it stays at game over for a while and makes you select an option. And all right, so here we go. The Alchemy Laboratory. Let's give this one more shot, I think. I think that's all she wrote for tonight for this one. Um, as I said, I you know, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It's one of those ones I've heard enough about that I'm willing to just like actually recommend it as a game that like if you especially if you like Castlevanias and stuff, you know. Um, this one definitely should be on your list of top thousand and one games. If you like Castlevania and that's the only game you like, and you're making a list of a thousand and one video games you should play, I venture to say this one should probably go on that list. Even if you like maybe Castlevania and one other game, and you're making a list of a thousand and one, I would put this one on too, so there you go. Okay, I'm gonna try and kill this green guy first, because he is clearly the most annoying. Oop, he got me a little bit. Come on, you jerk. Oh, I got him a couple times. Oh, I, I think I got the blue guy, too. 
My jerk. Ah, missed him. Oh, I think I killed him. Or I didn't. Oh god. Ooh! I did kill that guy. There we go. Yeah! Look at that. Crazy damage on that guy. Oh! But he shoots big fireballs! Now... Okay, and land... And down you go. Hey, I actually beat him! That's impressive. That, that wasn't too bad, I would say. That was like in... They were a little hard, but it's like they had like a good pattern. You know what, as, a, as an old school gamer, I appreciate bad guys with a good attack pattern. Definitely sort of gives you like a reward feeling when you when you beat them because oh look at this you do a back dash um, When you do beat them because it's like you feel like you earned it like you actually did it Oh was that guy a zombie that's cool That guy was like that looked like a full soldier A bloody old zombie we got him guess we should go in here see what this is first uh, Why not why not save overwrite your data Get in that D20. And off we go. So yeah, even though this is a Metroidvania style game where it's like, I still don't even really know where we are. Like the map is a little confusing. At least it sort of does a pretty good job of like leading you where you need to go. Like we've never sort of hit a point where we're like, where the hell do we go? And maybe I've just been lucky and not accidentally hitting a dead end, but... I'm just getting a feel like it's, it's not like you couldn't get lost, but, uh, it's not just, uh, going out of its way to try and make you get lost. All right, we're getting better at those guys. Oh, oh my God, ow. Oh Jesus, I'm poisoned. Oh, jeez. Oh, there we go. Die already. Oh my god, how many health points does that guy have? Oh god. Okay, I'm just gonna go for it. Oh my god. Oh god. Okay, run! Oh god. Oh god. We're going down. I'm blinking red. I need that Ninja Turtles like, do 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 when your health is low, that like annoying little like jingle beep. Jingle beeps help me know that I'm in trouble. Oh my god. One hit! We're done for. Oh no! Oh, I thought I was done there. Oh, we actually got him. Okay. Oh my god, two of them. I can't hold off two. Die. Oh! This is like a little nerve-wracking, actually. Look at this seductive angel trying to seduce me. Hmm, Alucard doesn't know how he feels about that. Oh wait, I should use some powers. How do I do this? Oh god! Maybe I shouldn't screw around with the powers when I'm almost dying and just stick with what I know. Yes! One thing I've always found confusing in Castlevania games is how the hearts are actually just like power-ups. As opposed to in most other games, hearts are health. Also, if you are a vampire, like let's say you are Alucard, hearts are not your health? Oh god, oh no. Oh no. Die. Yeah, that worked. A lot of clocks in this room. They kind of went overboard on putting clocks in the- This is the one room where they're like, we really don't want to lose track of time in here. We really, it's sort of like the Doc Brown uh, at the beginning of Back to the Future. It has like a thousand clocks. And they all go off at once. Which, that was like an experiment, right? He's like time synchronization experiment with Marty. And yet, what do you hear? I've come to destroy this castle. Then we have the same purpose. I'll trust you for now. I'm Maria. Who are you? Alucard. Not the talkative type, I can see. Well, perhaps we'll meet again. 
If you live that long, farewell. Joke's on you, I live forever. Oh, what is this room? This looks kind of cool. You jump up here? Feels like he could just grab the ledge and get up there. It always frustrates me. Not like really frustration. Like I know why you can't get up there. It's a gameplay thing. But in real life, if you could jump this high, you would just grab that and climb up. Sort of like in some video games where like your character, there's like a little bush in the way and your character wants to go around it, but it's like they won't climb over it. I think especially in older games where um, it was harder to make games, people would forgive um, games for doing that. But nowadays, especially as game development has gotten easier with like all sorts of good engines like Godot and stuff. Um, it's sort of like those little annoyances are sort of like I don't know, less forgivable, I guess. Like not not less forgivable. Like I, w I wouldn't berate a game if it if it had like quirks like that, because many games do. Oh, my God. A table was camouflaged and killed me. What a way to go. Very splatter house for the furniture to come alive and kill you. Um, but I guess it's just, it's nicer when modern games allow you to overcome those, like, silly things, you know? But anyway, a table killed me, guys. That's how Alucard got taken down. A friggin' table. <laughs> Hopefully it was possessed with the soul of an evil doll or something cool. Otherwise, it's like, literally poorly placed furniture caused him to die. Um, Castlevania Symphony of the Night here. One of the games of a thousand video games just play before you die. Two thumbs up. Go ahead and play it. Um, Castlevania games have never been my... Or, sorry, let me rephrase this. I always loved the idea of Castlevania and Castlevania 3 even on... Or 4 on Super Nintendo. That one was cool. Um, I was never a huge fan when Castlevania went Metroidvania style because I was never a huge fan of the Metroid model. But I know a lot of people love it. So if you love Metroid and you love Castlevania... Um, and you've never heard of this game. I don't know what's wrong with you, but check it out. It's a game you're going to like, a game you're going to love. And even if you just love old Castlevania, it's like a nice, more modernish game. So for the Castlevania fans out there, yeah, I think this is this one's going to hit. Um, and even if you just like old school platformers, and if you do like exploration more than me, um, then I think you'll enjoy this one. That's what I think of the game. And I stand by it. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, I hope you did enjoy today's video. Go ahead, like it, subscribe, all that stuff. And other than that, I will catch you soon in another video and another game. Till next time, my friends, you take care of yourselves. In peace.